Were you part of the 80% of the media who picked the Kansas City Chiefs? Including Nick Wright from Fox Sports 1, who will now be known as Nick Wrong oh. this entire week. Wow. Yes. Officially? <laughs> yeah. Nick Wright from Fox Sports 1. First things first, Nick Wrong, <laughs> because he said the Chiefs were going to win by 16. And if you see Nick Wright and you run into Nick Wright, just say, hey, Nick Wrong. And you have my permission. You have my blessing. Wow. Uh, Nick wasn't able to join us today. He said that he had a uh, last-second Fox obligation that uh, meant he could not join us on the show. But uh, Nick said he'll join us tomorrow on the program. All right. Welcome. 877-3DP-SHOW. Email address dp at danpatrick.com. Twitter handle at DP Show. Come up with a poll question, play of the day, stat of the day. Say good morning to those watching on Peacock, listening on Chat Row. And also a great radio affiliates around the country, numbering nearly 400 cities in America. Uh, Let's see, where do we start? If I told you on Friday the Chiefs are not going to score a touchdown, that would be probably one of the colder takes you could possibly have. Or Rob Gronkowski is going to score two touchdowns. If there is a blowout, it'll be the uh, Buccaneers blowing out the Chiefs. Nobody had that. I think if anybody had a blowout, it was Nick Wrong, and he had him by 16. A lot of people had it Chiefs winning by four, five, six, or if the Patriots, or Patriots, I keep saying that with Brady, old habits die hard. The Buccaneers were going to win. It was going to be by a couple of points. I had the Buccaneers winning 28-27. I still think and thought and have thought this way the entire postseason, the defense was the real MVP. I said uh, on Friday that this is a quarterback game and one quarterback's going to win the MVP and one is going to lose it. And that's what happened. Tom Brady was going to be the MVP if the Bucs won and Patrick Mahomes would have been the MVP if the Chiefs won. That doesn't mean it went to the right people because Tom Brady was great, but that defense set the tone for everything. Defense was great. Bend, didn't break. Chiefs had a chance inside the red zone. You come away with three field goals. Shaq Barrett, wonderful. Devin White, you know how I felt about him all season long? He's only 22. But if you're going to put that much pressure on Patrick Mahomes and you don't blitz, you got a great chance of winning. And that's what happened. He was hurried 24 times if you follow such stats. But it comes down to can you make some plays? And who would have thought former Patriots Rob Gronkowski, Antonio Brown are going to score touchdowns in the Super Bowl? Leonard Fournette was kicked to the curb by the Jags. He was cut. Leonard Fournette was wonderful last night. Nobody wanted Leonard Fournette. You already had Ronald Jones, so you had a a good running back. They brought in Fournette, and Fournette was great last night. Had touchdown run. He rushed for almost 90 yards. He was there for a couple of pass receptions. He kept the you know moving the chains, and uh, that's a big difference here with that team. And you had not the deep ball. I mean, Mike Evans had a couple of catches, but, you know, who would have thought Gronk was going to be a big difference maker there and then Antonio Brown as well. But even though he's considered the GOAT, it's still easy to take Tom Brady for granted. We're so used to seeing him on the podium after a Super Bowl. We lose, I think we lose sight of how improbable this run is. Because keep in mind, if you're old enough to understand the Buccaneers organization, it has been the laughing stock of the NFL. I don't think anybody's close to the Buccaneers, and they do have a Super Bowl. I mean, the Lions are bad. The Browns at least had a legacy back in the 60s when they were a championship team before the Super Bowl era. But the Buccaneers, they were the laughing stock of the NFL, and they hadn't done anything since 2007. So you get a 42 year old quarterback who's going to join you, there's no training camp. There's no preseason, and we're somehow going to make this work. And he goes in there, and he recruits Gronk. He uh, lobbies for Antonio Brown. And all of a sudden, I think Brady realized, I like, I, I like my weapons. I got a coach I like. Uh, we have a fun back and forth. But I think what Brady really saw was just how good that defense could be because it was young, and they were able to make plays. And so Brady didn't have to feel that pressure of, 
I got to go out there and put up 28 points every single weekend. But when they lost three or four in November, when they got blown out 38 to three to New Orleans, if you would have said that team's winning the Super Bowl, I would have said, no, they're not. I think I even had doubts, and I had them making the playoffs. I had doubts that they were going to make the playoffs back then. I mean, they were a wild card team. But it all came together when it's supposed to come together, and that is the playoffs. But I still go back to the defense. Even though Brady transformed the Buccaneers, you could, uh, and you could say this is his most improbable title. Maybe you go back to the first one he had when he was with New England, when he took over for Drew Bledsoe. But this is different. It's incredible the Bucks team could come together so quickly. And, you know, Brady's achieved everything. But the feeling is he hasn't achieved anything. If you see him on the field, he's demonstrative. It, it, it's so important to him. And he does have the title of greatest of all time. But congrats to Brady, the Buccaneers. We witnessed NFL history once again last night. Another milestone in Brady's remarkable career. And uh, congrats to the Bucs and the greatest quarterback of all time. Here is Tom Brady talking about that defense. They stepped up to the challenge. And, uh, you know, you go up against a guy like Pat, incredible player. And um, Aaron, MVP, two weeks ago they played incredible. And then uh, Drew, they played great. They just they stepped up. They rose to the occasion. He also had this to say about his legacy. Have you given any thought to what this all means to your legacy, all the factors that you had to go through to make it to this point? You know, it's – Man, we've been grinding pretty hard, so I haven't really had a lot of time to think about all the, you know, things like that. So I'm just blessed, grateful for my teammates, um, all the people that have supported us all year, my boy Alex. You know, it's been a great year. The Chiefs are just the third team to not score a touchdown in the Super Bowl. Joining the Dolphins, they uh, played Dallas and lost 24-3, to and the Rams against New England, that was 13-3. to some people have reminded me, hey, you said the Chiefs were the better team. Yes, going into that game, I thought the Chiefs were the better team, but I said, and I've said on numerous times, I'd never been against Tom Brady. Until he loses, where I think that he is not playing well, then I would change my opinion. If I, if I was betting Tom Brady, I'd be a rich man. Even when he lost to the Eagles, he played as well as you could possibly play. Maybe the greatest performance in a losing effort in Super Bowl history. Brady makes plays. Now, did I have questions about the officiating? Absolutely. If I'm a Chiefs fan, I'm going to look at that and say it felt one-sided. And there were times in the first half, I thought that there were a couple of times they could have picked up the flags. You know, Chris Jones' retaliation. Tyron Matthews, retaliation, uh, the pass interference in the end zone. I didn't think those were necessary calls. Uh, Mike Evans getting tripped. Yeah, I, you got to call it. Uh, offsides. You know, I mean, it just there are moments where you go, Kansas City didn't look ready. They didn't look ready for what Todd Bowles, the defensive coordinator, did. And we knew. We said it, that I thought if Shaq Barrett is going against the same tackle that the Denver Broncos and Von Miller took advantage of six years ago, I'm guessing that tackle is not that much better than he was six years ago. And Shaq Barrett is a beast. And they were missing a couple of offensive linemen. And they took advantage of that. When you don't have to blitz Mahomes, and you just play zone, you see first down and second down, and they really mix things up. Take away Tyree Kill, best you can. Kelsey had catches. Take away Tyree Kill. Tyree Kill is the one where that's the backbreaker. If you let Kelsey catch and you move down, but you move down slower, it's okay. Eight yards a catch, we're fine with that. We cannot give up a home run. And they didn't. Secondary, that was belittled. After what happened week eight, when Tyreek Hill burned him for, you know, almost 275 yards, they came back and played well. They put pressure. They hit Mahomes. And that's another thing that I said on Friday. If, if you don't get to him to sack him, hit him. 
They hit him 12 times. Tom Brady got hit two times. But it felt like that touchdown at the end of the first half, that was it. It was strange because I thought, okay, the only guy who's ever come back from that kind of deficit is the one who's leading 21-3. to And as much as, you know, we love the magic of Mahomes, it wasn't there. And it reminded me, believe it or not, of Patrick Mahomes in college. Because I watch Texas Tech football. They weren't very good, but I did watch. And usually I'd come in on Monday and tell the Danettes, this guy, he's a lot of fun. I don't know if he can play in the NFL. But they'd lose 45-41, and he just ran for his life. And that's what I thought when I was watching. Uh, He ran for his life. And he's got a toe he's going to need surgery on. And given the circumstances, I mean, he... He had moments he played well considering they put a lot of pressure, they hit him, and his receivers didn't help him out. But if you don't put pressure on Brady, you don't have any interceptions. They had the one that was called back due to a a holding penalty on the other side of the field with Tyron Matthew. That was big. You You need one or two of those, and they didn't get it. And Mahomes getting picked off twice. McLovin, what kind of poll question do we have? Okay. I have a real poll question, but before that, I have a question for people in the room who picked the Bucks. Yeah. Which was a bigger factor, not betting against Tom Brady or the offensive line injuries? Because you seem to be focused on both of those in the two weeks leading up. Well, I wouldn't bet against Brady, but the most important element with all of this was the offensive line for Kansas City. Plus, it's not like they helped the offensive line. They had five, five guys on the offensive line, but it's not like they were keeping people in with Shaq Barrett and Dominic and Sue. And that was surprising because the line obviously couldn't be as good as what they normally have. I mean, you're losing three starters and you're moving guys around. And and even if you had a healthy offensive line, Tampa Bay was still going to put pressure on Patrick Mahomes. I truly believe that. If you did that to Green Bay, you were going to do that to Patrick Mahomes. Yes, McClellan. So that leads to the real poll question. Okay. Who would you have voted for for Super Bowl MVP? And here are the choices we came up with. Tom Brady, of course. Rob Gronkowski. Leonard Fournette, 89 yards on a TD. Devin White, the linebacker. Or Shaq Barrett, the pass rusher. Uh, And we can add people if anyone has someone else. I always think outside the box here. But I'm in the minority. I would have given it to Todd Bowles. I don't know if it's possible to give the most valuable player. Maybe it's the most valuable person. But what Todd Bowles did was unthinkable. He basically shut out the Kansas City Chiefs. No touchdowns. This is a defensive performance that will be remembered forever. I would have given it to him. Uh, If you can't give it to him, I, I guess I would give it to Brady. Because I, I'll say this when I watch the game. Brady has that ability to, you always feel like you're in the game. Because you are. When you're down 28-3 to to Atlanta, you've got Brady. And that even the Falcons said that on the sidelines. Hey, don't celebrate. They still got Brady on the other side. But to have that ability to have a calming influence or we're never out of the game has to be reassuring. And you got... You know, like a minute to go in the first half, one timeout, and he seemed fine. And he finds Antonio Brown for the touchdown, and I go, I think that's the game. Yeah, McLevin. One timeout and two Andy Reid timeouts. Oh, I do. The, the Chiefs thought they're getting the ball back. Like, hey, uh, you know, if they go three and out, we're going to get the ball back, or they kick a field goal, we're going to get the ball back. And all of a sudden, he's taking timeouts, and I'm going, man, this might come back and haunt you. And then he finds Antonio Brown for the touchdown. So, uh, who feels worse today? Bill Belichick, Robert Kraft. <laughs> <laughs> Wh- whose call was it? It's Kraft's, right? I think it has to start with Belichick. Because oh. if Belichick says, you know, let's give Tom a two-year deal or three-year extension, then Robert Kraft would do that. Because Tom's like a son to him. I, I don't think he's like a son to Belichick. Yes, he. 
I would think Robert Kraft feels worse because I would imagine Bill Belichick still doesn't think he did anything wrong. <laughs> he woke up this morning like, yeah, and I still made the right decision. I'm glad I got rid of those players. Do you think Belichick watched the game? First half. <laughs> he had seen enough. I complained that? that Brady was getting all the calls. <laughs> <laughs> he and his girlfriend are there. Oh, that's not a penalty. No, no, he wouldn't God, be like he that. He always gets all the calls. He'd be like, oh, that's not a penalty. <laughs> Tom gets all the calls. Yeah, Paul. No matter what, Belichick will never admit to watching Super Bowl. He said, I was watching Josh Allen tape in his basement for mm. four hours. Um, I'll do uh, 2021. All right, uh, phone calls. We'll get to those. Best and worst of the weekend. But uh, Chris Sims will join us. And... Uh, if you're a Chiefs fan, I'm here for you. Just to let you know. Great year. But these dynasties are tricky. Yeah, they are. Just ask Russell Wilson. This is littered. You know, the NFL is littered with the, boy, we're going to be a dynasty here. Patrick Mahomes, in his first three quarters of both Super Bowls, has not been a good quarterback. He wasn't last year against San Francisco. Uh, came through when he needed to. But he has not had good numbers through the first three quarters. And uh, again last night. But the line last night did not help out at all. Yeah, McLovin. Should he? I felt like he didn't throw the ball early enough. He was trying to make big plays. I thought he was holding on to the ball too long. And, and he was getting hit so many times because I thought he was holding on to the ball. You know, Brady doesn't hold on to the ball. But he's not looking for the big play. Is now, that because Mahomes thinks he can always make a play? Sure. And, and he normally does. I mean, let's not forget, he even had incompletions last night that quarterbacks wouldn't even attempt. It goes back to the line when I, I talked to Pete Sampras about Roger Federer. He said he hit shots that I don't even think I could create in my mind to hit. And he hits those. And that was the way, you know, Patrick Mahomes was. Last. There were a couple of them where he's in the grasp and he's somehow throwing the ball 25 yards down the field. 